I'm not the biggest fan of horror games. Well, most modern horror games. I enjoy games that rely on proper tension and atmosphere to add to scares. One of my favorite games of all time, after all, is Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, as its horror elements and sanity effects perfectly add to the tension of each character's exploration. But nowadays, when people think of horror games, they think of stuff that relies on cheap scares or jump scares to get the fear going. And simply put, that's just not the kind of horror I like, because once the jump scare happens, the fear's over. You know those kinds of games, like Five Nights at Freddy's. But back to the point, atmosphere is the scariest kind of thing in a horror game to me. It's why I loved RPG Maker horror games like Witch's House, Mad Father, and Misao. But even before those reached popularity, there was a really hidden atmospheric horror game that caught my attention. One by the name of The White Chamber. Released in 2005 as a freeware game by Studio Trophus, even to this day, it's still considered one of the greatest freeware horror games ever made, and I wholeheartedly agree. And to think, also, that this was the game that started the talented career of Kira freaking Buckland. Yeah, you know the one who was in a crap ton of popular Newgrounds animations in the mid-2000s, would later go on to be the voice of 2B in Nier Automata? Yeah, that Kira Buckland. So why is The White Chamber considered one of the best freeware games ever made? Let's dive in. The story at first is left rather vague. You wake up as a tall, purple-haired woman in a coffin with no recollection of how she arrived there. When she wakes up, she later finds out that she's aboard a space station and is asked by a panel she seeks redemption, with you agreeing or not, but I'll get to that in a moment. Your goal of this game is to find out how to get off the ship by exploring it and collecting and placing certain items to progress. All you need to control the game is the mouse. Left-clicking moves you to that area, while right-clicking opens up an interaction menu on certain items. For example, if you wanted to look at this cabinet, you can either hit the eye icon to look at it and get some flavor text, or hit the hand icon to open it. Some items need to be collected for future use. Highlighting over the top of the screen will open your inventory menu, where you can use any items you've collected. Thankfully, anything you collect is kept there until used. The puzzles are very basic, so this isn't a hard game to get the grasp of. The station isn't very large, thankfully, so you shouldn't get lost. The station consists of an elevator platform, a control center, a medical bay, a lounge, a dormitory, a laboratory, and a storage facility. While you explore the facility and solve the puzzles to progress, you notice some things that are very off about the station. Now sure, you may think it being rusty and deserted being weird enough, but soon you start seeing blood caked on the floor, body parts scattered around the facility, oh yeah, and the character starts experiencing hallucinations. Yeah, within the first 10 minutes, your character sees hallucinations on the facility. Satanic demons who pierce her in the heart, a beach that only shows up once after entering a door, and easily the most famous part of the game, the corridor. After collecting enough body parts, the lounge suddenly opens up to an endless hallway with an eye, an inverted body, and a traffic light that changes color the further you walk down. And the further you go down this hallway, the more the eye opens up, and the more distorted the music gets. This is the perfect kind of atmosphere. In fact, let's talk about that real quick. The atmosphere. The ambiance in the white chamber perfectly fits with the story. A desolate wasteland of a station that you can easily tell has something happened here. And the character's confusion and shock at certain events perfectly encapsulates her fear of the situation. You'd freak out if you saw a severed arm in a cabinet. You'd be confused if you saw yourself being shocked on tape. But I think one of the only downsides to the White Chamber is Kira's delivery. I'm going to be nice as this was one of the earliest roles in her career. No one starts out perfect. But while Kira can certainly make the character emote, her delivery during certain scenes sounds kind of wooden for the mood they're setting. When she finds the arm, her delivery is perfect, shocked at the sight. Oh shit, Th that's someone's arm. What the hell is going on here? When she finds the guy shaking in the freezer and it turns to gore? Oh my gosh, this is beyond words. Maybe that's a sign the character has gotten used to her situation, but still, sometimes the delivery is off on her. But I think where the atmosphere doesn't miss is the soundtrack. Composed by Zakir Rahman, he does an excellent job creating extremely unnerving atmospheric pieces, such as the station ambiance, Tense and scary themes like the corridor sequence. <laughs> a 
and even calming pieces like the normalized station theme for the ending. The art style definitely helps with the game, as the artwork for the characters are very mid-2000s Newgrounds aesthetics, and the animations are really great for the time. The station's artwork though is easily the highlight, as all areas are really well detailed and provide such a gritty vibe to them. Back to the plot, you soon discover a set of video logs of a guy by the name of Arthur who was a researcher aboard the station. He talks about how they discovered an artifact and are studying its effects and uses, and they've sealed it away in a white chamber to perform the tests. It's in these we learn the player character's name, Sarah. Sarah was also a researcher, but you learn that once the artifact was aboard, Sarah began acting weird, and after setting the explosives on the vent door, you discover the chamber the artifact is held in along with the corpse of Arthur. Arthur's spirit monologues about how Sarah killed all the researchers aboard the ship because she was drawn by the artifact's power. This especially pained Arthur, as he deeply loved and respected Sarah. Arthur, with his dying breath, had made the artifact cause Sarah to go into an endless loop in the hopes that she can redeem her actions. Your actions throughout the game determined if you're escaping or not. And just how do you know if you will escape and what fate becomes of Sarah because of that? Well... In the laboratory, there's a blackboard that has scratch marks on it. These are your karma points. Certain actions you do in the game can influence what ending you get once you reach the white chamber. There's only one action that can lose you that starting karma point, and that's cutting the wire in the stationary room when it tells you not to. Doing this and not doing any heroic deeds gets you the torment ending, where Sarah restarts in the coffin but is eaten alive by demons. However, doing heroic deeds such as trying to break open the pod during the corridor sequence, or covering the body in the freezer room with a blanket gets you an extra karma point. Getting 1-2 to two karma points gets you the damned ending, where Sarah is good but not good enough to be redeemed. Getting 3 to 5 karma points gets you the redemption ending, where you escape the station, but it's still not a happy ending as Sarah is now stuck aboard a planet with no civilization and no way back. Stuck on an island forever. Now if you get all 6 points, then you get the comedy ending where, well... Not a fracking bite! It's a fracking cake! You fracking! You mama! <laughs> <laughs> Now on top of the four normal playthrough endings, there's also four hidden death endings. The first ending is during the scene with the beach. If you try to re-enter, Sarah would nearly get sucked out into space. If you try to go through that door three more times, you get the space ending, as Sarah is sucked out into space. The second is during the electrocution scene. If you take longer than three minutes to free yourself, Sarah's body gets fried to death, resulting in the torture ending. The third is immediately after the electrocution scene, where Sarah says that this elevating fridge is a horrible stench. Leaving and re-entering three times will cause Sarah's face to literally melt, causing the venomous ending. And finally, the last, and in my opinion the funniest, ending is after you gathering all the body parts together and leaving and re-entering the room, the corpse you put together springs to life and locks itself in a quarantine zone, and after discovering it, it traps you in there. And to get the decayed ending, all you have to do on the question, do you want to leave, is answer no and Sarah literally rots in there for the rest of her life. I think The White Chamber is still one of the best freeware horror games ever made. The writing, while simplistic, is interesting, the art style is purely nostalgic, the illustrations of the areas are chilling, the music is perfect amounts of tense, and it helps that the game doesn't take too long to beat, as you can beat the game in about an hour and a half on your first playthrough. But you know a game is that good when it doesn't feel like it takes that long. You play this game and it feels like it takes double or triple that time. I'm honestly still heartbroken that the remaster was supposedly cancelled. Yeah, in 2014 a remaster of the game by the original devs was in development with new animations, new areas and puzzles, remastered dialogue, all for a paid price on Steam. And I was super excited, but we haven't heard anything in years. The website still says it's coming soon, but some say that the game got cancelled. I'm hopeful we'll see it, as this game still has a massive legacy in terms of not only the horror scene, but even the indie scene. If you want to try a horror game that's quick and painless, try The White Chamber. If you like point and click games, try The White Chamber. If you want to play a game that'll scare you without you screaming like a baby, try The White Chamber. It still is a fantastic game and deserves all the legacy it has. I'm Payday, thank you so much for watching, and happy Halloween!